It washes ashore in waves, some days much worse than others, but sargasm, which is a natural phenomenon caused by climate change, continues to be a challenge for stakeholders in the tourism industry, as well as government. As it funnels past the reef and ripples inwards, sargasm settles, rots, and then gives off a pungent odor that is carried by the wind. It is also an eyesore. But one thing for certain is that sargasm is here to stay. We have to accept and be realistic that um, the sargasm is here to stay. That is a result of consequences of climate change. Um, what we do is also, it's only mitigation that we have to be. So we have to be working with that. About three weeks ago, the accumulation of sargasm was jaw-dropping. Swaths of seaweed stretched from the shoreline up to 350 feet into the water, causing beach erosion. Despite daily cleanup efforts by resorts, the situation only got worse. Today, shoveling sargasm into wheelbarrows and carting it away continued. But thanks to the current weather conditions, the algae is being pushed out to sea. This is only temporary. Of course, you know, we had a weather over our country and then the winds are shifting. Like this morning, the, the wind is blowing from the northeast and a very cool breeze. And um, yesterday I was on a flight going to Belize when I saw that there was no sargassum in the water. So it, it switches, it changes. But that doesn't mean you're going to sit down and say, oh, they are right now. No, it's going to come back. And it's going to come back with a vengeance. To mitigate the issue, there must be input by hoteliers, stakeholders in the tourism industry, the San Pedro Town Council through the Sargasm Task Force, as well as a multi-ministerial approach. Grand Carib and the folks over at Raman's Village Resort have put in place infrastructure to capture the sargasm, preventing it from beaching. We have uh, put in uh, what we call booms to, um, to keep the sargasm from beaching, and, um, and, um, and that has helped considerably. Um, and it's been keeping us from doing less work when it's not as windy, because when it's windy, it goes over the boom, um, and we still have to clean it up. Environmental concerns aside, the mitigation of sargasm is economically taxing on stakeholders. For us, it has affected us more, um, more financially, where we have to hire more personnel to clean the sargasso. Um, as you know, our beach is our, is our prime um, treasure and, um, and we need to keep it clean. So um, normally when the sargasso is affected the way it has been for the last month, um, we hire more people or we take people from other departments to help clean it up and, um, and we take them truckloads out of the beach and make sure that um, the beach is kept clean. We employ additional eight people on a daily basis. Uh, including transportation and meals and all of that. Uh, they're coming, they're starting, 5.30 in the morning they start. They don't stop until 4.30 in the afternoon. We have three ATVs with three um, trailers uh, running the whole day, just uh, taking whatever they are piling up, taking it and, and discarding it in the, in the, in the back where, where we have to landfill it. Okay. But it is a daily battle and, and it, it's very cost intensive to run this operation. I mean, it's eight laborers that we are paying on a daily basis, seven days a week. A plan by the government of Belize, primarily the ministries of climate change, tourism and blue economy, to filter the sargasm before it beaches. It's the common stream within a week or two. It is a service from neighboring Mexico, which is used in Playa del Carmen, but the investment is expensive. It is a costly venture that GOB is considering, but in a few weeks, a testing phase will take place in San Pedro. A team from the three ministries went to Playa del Carmen um, on an ambitious project that's being done in Playa. I think there is a company there that has a fleet of pontoon boats. And uh, um, we send people there with the pontoon boats and to look at it, how it's working, along with the little barges on the side. So what they do with these pontoon boats is that they go out and capture the sargasm. In other words, they don't wait for it to come to the shore because whenever the sargasm comes to the shore, that is when it ferments and then you get that rotten smell of um, sulfuric acid. I think the, sulf the air is sulfuric, so it smells bad. The entire tongue uh, these days, you can smell it. We quickly realized that we may be at an advantage in terms of the reef. The reef can help us. Um, what they notice is that outside the reef, the sargassum is coming towards shore, but eventually it starts, there are cuts in the, river, in, in, in the reef. And these cuts actually make the sargassum turn into a funnel, and it funnels through, and you see this long swat, long line of sargassum. So we believe that we can capture it there before it comes to shore. Whatever comes to shore is something that can easily be maneuverable to be handled by the municipality or the resorts that can be.
The process, if successful, could be adopted and used across tourist destinations to mitigate the sargasm issue. Dwayne Moody for News 5.